Are you trying to figure out the best stats to give each character in the Super Mario RPG remake? In this guide, I'll show you the most optimal builds for your party. You'll be unstoppable! For this guide, I'll go in order of when each character joins your party. But before we begin, I need to explain that each time you level, one of the bonus stats you have will have an extra added bonus. You can tell this by looking at the magic or physical bonus. If the bonus is more than plus one on the attack, then that is the extra bonus stat at this level. HP is sometimes hard to tell because each character gains a different amount per level. So, if both magic and physical are only getting one added attack stat, you know the extra bonus is on HP that level. Now let's get started with the star of the show, Mario! Mario, as to be expected, will be the first character of what will end up being a five person party. He is also the only character that has to be part of your active party at all times, which isn't bad news because he is super strong and well rounded. For his stats there are two solid paths to take. The first would be to just boost his physical. Mario has a very strong physical attack. Once he gets the lazy shell, he's going to be absolutely destroying everything in sight. You will rarely find the need to use his spells throughout the course of the main story. To go this route, you'll want to put all his bonus stats into physical. Although whenever HP gets the extra boost, go for that for a bit of added survivability. This is the build that I normally use in the SNES version of the game as well. However, in the Switch version of the game, you might want to consider using a well-balanced build instead. There is an end game to the Switch version that needs to be considered. The end game will contain enemies that are pretty much completely resistant to physical attacks or otherwise weak to Mario's specials. For that reason, I recommend a balanced build. Each level, pick whatever stat has the added bonus on, equally boosting Mario's physical, magic, and HP. He will still be able to wallop enemies with his physical attacks, but this will give him more options for the end game. Also, you get some added magic defense, which is super helpful later on. The main story shouldn't be too much of a problem no matter what build you pick, especially if you follow my leveling tips that I'm gonna share with you towards the tail end of this video. Next up is Mallow. Mallow is absolutely useless when it comes to physical attack. Just ignore that stat entirely, pumping up his magic and throw in HP every third level when it has the extra bonus stat. Mallow was quite useless in the first game and is only mildly better in this one. He is key for leveling at lightning speeds at the beginning and mid game. Other than that, I really only use him to scan enemies for their weaknesses using his Thought Peak spell. Now we're off to meet the wizard, the wonderful wizard of the game, Gino. Gino is an absolute powerhouse. He has some of my favorite spells in the game, one of which can boost the power of all your party members, allowing you to absolutely stomp the competition. He, like Mario, is very well balanced, and although you can make the argument for just boosting his magic, I think it's best to balance his bonuses as well, as his physical is just as stellar as his magic, so just copy the same formula as Mario, boosting whatever stat receives the extra bonus that level, equally boosting his physical, HP, and magic. If you're liking this video so far, consider leaving a like or subscribing. It really helps a small channel like mine get their foot into the door of YouTube, and it also triggers my brain to fill me with a healthy dose of dopamine. Soon after Gino, you will be joined by the big bad of the Koopa clan himself, Bowser. He is already stacked the moment he joins your party with a super strong physical attack and can withstand quite the beating. However, his spells can be absolutely crucial towards the end of the game. He can not only do lots of area of effect and single target damage with his abilities, but he can also poison and fear his foes, which proves super useful in certain situations. So for him, just boost his magic, throwing in HP whenever it receives the bonus. Last but certainly not least, as she is pretty much always in my active party, Princess Peach. Peach, in my opinion, is the best character in the game. She has super powerful healing spells that not only keep your party alive, but also heals any status effects like poison and fear. Also, reverts you back to your true form if you've been turned into a mushroom or a scarecrow. She also has a powerful area of effect spell and some not so bad physical attacks. Better than Mallow anyways. So for her, you're going to want to stack her magic stat, giving her HP whenever it gets the extra bonus. On top of that, 
If you give her the lazy shell armor later in the game, she will be damn near impossible to kill. Allowing her to keep your party in tip top fighting shape and making this game an absolute breeze to get through. Follow these guidelines and you should have no issues beating this game. If you have already spent some points on stats that don't match these builds, don't worry. It won't make a huge impact on your game. These builds will just give you a slight edge on the more difficult bosses. I wish you the best of luck in your quest to save the Mushroom Kingdom. And let me know in the comments down below who you think will be your favorite character to keep in your active party at all times. But until next time, keep on questing. Thank <laughs> you.